It is a big road, a book, a series of tubes, a cloud, a railroad, a tidal wave of information, a shopping mall, a village square, a new frontier, maybe a sort of digital spiderweb into which bits of data can get stuck like flies. You visit sites like a tourist, read pages like they are books, and browse sites like a shop. And when you're done, you go home. It's not a series of tubes, it's a series of metaphors. So says Simon Pitt in his description of that activity and practice which is to go online today. Taken out of context, it sounds all very poetic. It sounds light-hearted. It suggests going online is a recreational activity we can pretty much do without much thought. We have a term for this, the cyber flaneur, the person who idly surfs the internet. But herein lies the danger. Without digital literacy development and the thoughtful, mindful online practice it encourages, we will miss out on the great opportunities afforded by the internet. Without digital literacy development and practice and the thoughtful, mindful online practice it encourages, we will be unable to overcome the great challenges it presents us with now and will continue to present us with as it evolves. Here, I want to explore in greater depth these opportunities and challenges by thinking about how they represent the grander narrative, those changes and shifts in our society that require us to act now. Here, we need to nod to the debate relating to 21st century skills and the controversy surrounding the suitability of education for 21st century society. The narrative goes thus. We are living in the fourth industrial revolution, yet many of our education systems are stuck in the 19th century when the second industrial revolution hit. This was the revolution featuring mass production, the assembly line and electricity and factory lines. Education plugged into these new needs of society. Since then, we have lived through the third revolution, which began in the 1960s and used in the words of the executive chairman of the World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab, writing in 2016, electronics and information technology to automate production. Hence why the third revolution is sometimes called the digital revolution. The fourth industrial revolution is building on that digital turning point. It is, to again take Schwab's words, characterized by a fusion of technologies that is blurring the lines between the physical, digital and biological spheres. There is so much to unpack here in terms of those diminishing boundaries between those different spheres of society as ushered in by the fourth revolution. For now, I want to underline that digital literacy cuts across the patchwork of skills, that is practical knowledge, outlined as essential if we are to take part in this ongoing revolution and succeed in the 21st century, both personally and professionally. Here is how the World Economic Forum sets out 21st century skills. It takes in foundational literacies, competencies and character qualities. In the ways in which it feeds into and draws upon conventional subjects represented in foundational literacies, in the critical bent it encourages and with its focus on the individual, digital literacy is the unnamed 21st century skill par excellence sitting behind this framework. Let's think briefly about why this framework with digital literacy sitting behind it is so important. Here goes. Each revolution has seen technology take over human jobs. Steam and water power in the first, electricity in the second, the fourth revolution is bringing about an acceleration of the trend initiated during the third revolution, that is, digital technologies impacting employment. Understood as that holistic skill, digital literacy will thus help protect us from the threat of technological unemployment. It will ensure we can usefully interact with these technologies, bringing the clamoured for human element in their development and ensuring our continued stewardship or monitoring of them. As Wall Street journalist Joanna Stern has remarked, it's easy to forget they, gadgets, are only as good as what we humans do with them. In his latest book, Beyond the Valley, 
Ramesh Srinivasan highlights the disconnection between technology elites and the individual. He calls for the next chapter of the internet to place the individual at its center and for innovation to come from the ground up for the benefit of all rather than top down for the benefit of an elite few. Digital literacy can empower us to take part in this movement. It meanwhile allows us to take advantage of job opportunities and those new career paths and vocations opened up as a result. This employment shift is already well underway. A study of early career job adverts between 2013 and 2016 highlighted, for example, the huge rise in the need for critical thinking and digital literacy skills, up 158% and 212% respectively. Stay tuned for how this shift accelerates. Seen from another angle, digital literacy is the missing link between education and society. A 2020 study led by the Project Information Research Institute reported the following. Undergraduate students felt that the critical information skills taught as part of their courses gave them poor strategies for managing the mass of information they daily encounter. In general, students felt that information literacy and critical thinking instruction throughout all of their education was haphazard, inadequate and disconnected. To reconnect education at all levels to the needs and demands of 21st century society, we need to pair rather than displace the conventional bodies of knowledge we deliver in our education systems. Introduction to literatures, studies of the past, exploring the sciences, amongst others, with the lifelong skill of digital literacy. Such can be the narrative. It is a compelling one. Many champion it, many contest it, Perhaps the change predicted will not happen as quickly or in the same ways we anticipate, not least due to other factors such as global health crises. Yet, the 2007 YouTube hit Shift Happens, which at the time of speaking is nearing 5.8 million views, has proved eerily accurate. Check it out. Half of the world is yet to come online. For all of us, whether we fall into that half which is online already or that half yet to join, our future and, as Klaus Schwab of the World Economic Forum underlines, that of the internet isn't extraneous to us but rests in our hands. Little wonder then that the UK-based Five Rights Foundation advocates digital literacy as a children's right. There are many an opportunity and challenge online, as I will explore further elsewhere. For now, we have to be clear that the main ones are the opportunity to be part of and the challenge of being disconnected from societal transformation. <laughs>